USGS warns that Yellowstone supervolcano is emitting poisonous gas and people visiting the Yellowstone National Park are given a warning because they could be affected by this. Under most weather conditions, visitors will not be bothered by these gas emissions that are, are part of, of course, Yellowstone's hydrothermal areas, the uh, fissures, the uh, geysers that keep uh, springing every few moments, every few minutes. But the people recommended by the National Park Service that they should remain aware of potential gas hazards when exploring the areas and they should leave immediately if they feel sick. Even though there is no record of any human deaths due to exposures to these Yellowstone gases, the lessons of Death Gulch and Norris Bison provide warnings that should be heeded. And uh, you have a picture here dating all the way back to 1897. You have uh, a scientist, a geologist, of course, standing right next to a dead bear who they believe was uh, affected by the poisonous gases from the fissures and the geysers. So the Yellowstone supervolcano is the speculation whether there will be a major eruption in the future. Now national park authorities are pressing the issue to worry about as experts warn of the toxic poisonous gases that are venting from the volcano. As we know, Yellowstone is home to thousands of hot springs and geysers and these spew clouds of mostly harmless, rotten smelling gases, the sulfur smell, like the rotten egg smell. But the deeper parts of Yellowstone wilderness where tourists are told not to go, have toxic fumes of lethal gas and are powerful enough to kill. USGS scientists studying the Yellowstone supervolcano warn of the ever present danger in these latest the newest issues of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles that come out every week. The two killers are poisonous levels of carbon dioxide and also hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide CO2 and hydrogen sulfide H2S. And they're concentrated around the ground levels. Most of these gases emitted by Yellowstone's hydrothermal pipes are harmless water vapor gases, but be behind these emissions could be concentrations of toxic gases, which proved to be lethal to animals, as we see one of the pictures of 1897 of the dead bear. Uh, CO2 is particularly dangerous because it's odorless and colorless, and yet it can affect us. H2S, on the other hand, is easier to spot because of the distinctive smell of rotten eggs, but the gas is also colorless and it's also flammable. Both these gases pool around ground levels because they are heavier than air, and this can be absolutely lethal to animals that graze in parks of the field where their noses are close to the ground. Ms. Lewicki says, quote, in most circumstances, Wind will dilute carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide to low concentrations that do not threaten the health of people and animals. In certain very stable atmospheric conditions though, these relatively heavy gases can accumulate in low-lying areas and pose serious hazard." End quote. So this appears to have been the case back in 2004, quite recently, when a number of dead bison were found in the Norris Geyser, Geyser Basin following cold, still night. The animals had no physical markings of a predator attack and the animals appeared to have died suddenly as in a group. So Yellowstone officials later surmised the atmospheric conditions on that night allowed for the toxic gases to pool around the animals grazing area and thus slowly killing the wild beasts. A similar incident observed over a hundred years ago in 1897, here the picture that we have of the dead bear, 
the aptly named Death Gulch part of the park, where eight bear carcasses were discovered in 1897. Now concerning the Kilauea recent eruption, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory founder geologist Thomas Jagger speculated upon the discovery of the dead animals as a result of inhaling CO2 and H2O, uh, H2S. The U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, warns us that H2S is uh, the irritating agent to the eyes and the respiratory tract. When exposed to H2S, the gas can cause damage to the nervous system, triggering unconsciousness and even cause lung edema. So this is pretty serious stuff. Inhaling this gas can be lethal and immediate medical attention should be found. The CO2, which is odorless and colorless, is equally harmful if inhaled, causing suffocation and unconsciousness. The CDC also said, quote, high concentrations in the air cause a deficiency of oxygen with the risk of unconsciousness or death. Check oxygen content before entering the area. No odor warning of toxic concentrations are present, end quote. Now, in most of the times, thousands of tourists who visit the Yellowstone National Park on a daily basis have nothing to fear. Ms. Lewicki says, under most weather conditions, visitors will not be bothered by gas emissions that are the integral part of Yellowstone's fascinating hydrothermal areas. But as recommended by the National Park Services, people should remain aware of potential gas hazards when exploring areas and leave immediately if they feel sick, even though there's no record of any human deaths due to exposure to gases at Yellowstone, the lesson of Death Gulch and Norris Basin provide warnings that should be heeded. The Death Gulch, as we know, is, of course, the uh, eight bears that were found dead because of the poisonous toxic gases. I'll leave a link below for you for this. We just briefed this from Express UK by Sebastian Keatley. Kindly support by contributing to my Patreon account. You'll find it in the description box below. Thank you.